G'day everybody, my name's Ben from N12Turbo.com. Today we're going to be going through the N12 gearbox. We're going to do a full rebuild from scratch. We'll pull everything out and we're going to put the N13 internals in. Um, you may have seen this guide on the N12 website. It's basically a picture guide with a bit of text. What we're going to do today is a video tutorial. We're going to walk you through the whole process. Uh, all the tools you need, what you need from the N12 gearbox and what you need from the N13 gearbox. So if you watch this guide, you'll be ready to go at the end of it. Alright, so to start off with, you're going to want your N12 uh, gearbox here and you're going to want to take out all of these 12mm bolts that keep the bell housing on. Okay? So you want to go around and crack all of those off. Preferably in like a cross pattern. Now, in order to split the bell housing, if it hasn't been split in a long time, you don't want to use like flathead screwdrivers or things like that because it can actually damage the bell housing and it's going to cause a lot of problems. What I usually do, grab a good old rubber mallet, just go around the box and lightly tap it like that. It may take five minutes and every couple of taps just try and wiggle it a bit and eventually you should just be able to pull it off like this okay now you've probably noticed here already that one of the gear sets is gone um, my output shaft I've already taken out because I had new bearings put in it so from here what you're going to need is you've already got your 12 mil socket and your ratchet you're probably going to need a few extension bars to get to these uh, 10 mil and these 12mm over here. So go and grab your 12mm and 10mm sockets and we'll start pulling those off. The ones you're going to want to take off first will be these 10 mils here. There's three of them. So just undo those. Alright, now once you've got those three bolts undone, what you want to do is you take out the rod here which holds all the forks in okay take the rod out now you can just take the forks out uh, just watch down here there's these little tabs that keep the forks intact with the selectors so you just want to watch that they don't fall out and piss off everywhere. So now you've got the forks out, the selectors will just pull out. Uh, just be careful. There is a little ball bearing here and you don't want to lose that. So keep that somewhere safe. Now you've got your selectors out. There's also a little spring in that hole there. There's another ball bearing under this spring here. So just be aware of that. And there's another spring in here. Next what you want to do is the reverse gear here has a little sort of washer ring on it. So you want to take that off. Also put it in a safe spot probably with those little bearings. And then the reverse gear has this little uh, rod in it. You just want to pull that out, okay? And your reverse gear will come out, like that. The rod will actually come out of the reverse gear, so you can give it a clean up if you need to. You should be able to lift the diff out now. Put that aside, we're gonna to get to that in a minute. Next, you grab your 12 mil socket, and we'll undo the input shaft. Uh, in case you're wondering too, you should have been able to pull the output shaft out now. Um, I'll show you when I put it back in, how to put it back in and everything, but it should have came out by now. Now, with the input shaft, you'll notice that it's actually pushed way into the uh, gearbox housing. There's two ways you can remove it. You can use heat, like if you've got a heat gun. You can just go around with the heat gun. Be wary of this little plastic here. That's your oil drain. Uh, so you don't want to melt that. Or alternatively, you can tip the box over and hit it at the back with a rubber mallet 
uh, which we'll do in a minute. However, before you do that, just make sure you've got all these little springs and all the bearings out because when you tip the gearbox over, they're going to piss off like no tomorrow. And what we're going to do here is we'll tip the gearbox over and we'll pop out the input shaft. So just be mindful when you tip it over that that bearing will come out. And you're better off to try and get it out now rather than later. You just want to whack it. It'll take a little bit to get it out. There you go. Now the input shaft is out. When we do the N13 stuff and we put in the N13 gear set, I'm going to show you now uh, what you need to prepare for. So the selector shaft here is going to stay in. This is the N12 selector shaft and selectors. All this here is going to stay in. If for some reason you need to replace the boot here, as maybe you've got some oil leaking out, on the yoke uh, there's two small pins and you can punch them out with like a punch set. Punch sets look like this so you can see the little pins there you just grab your punch set put it on the pin and you hit that with the mallet and it'll pop out and the yoke will pull off and then you can replace the boot put the uh, pin back in there and you're done all right but anyway this whole shifter assembly needs to stay in we did try the N13 shifter rod and assembly, but we had a lot of issues with it. So I'd recommend you stay with the N12 stuff, leave it in there. It's a pain in the bum to get out anyway. Uh, the other thing is the Speedo gear here. This needs to stay in, so you don't want to take the N13 one out and put it in, otherwise you're not going to have a Speedo. The N12 uses a mechanical one and the N13 has an electric one, so just leave that in there. Now, we'll grab all the N13 stuff that we need to put in here and we'll talk about the bearings and races. Before I actually grab all my N13 gears and everything that I've got to put in, I'm just going to go over the gearbox, get all the oil out, um, any old metal shavings and those sorts of things, and we're just going to get rid of them we'll make a nice clean box and then we'll get into the N13 gear set. So here's what happens. Basically when you get your N13 gearbox, take everything out same as we've done here with the N12 box. You get the N13 diff and the N13 crown wheel, the N13 output shaft, the N13 input shaft, N13 reverse gear, we're going to use the N12 selectors, the N12 forks. You can use the N13 forks, um, they're pretty much identical. Now, this is actually a finished diff with a uh, crown wheel here. So, what's going to happen now, right, is you want to take the diff with the crown wheel attached, and just imagine this is the N13 one, right? You put it in the box, and when it's in the box, you'll notice that it doesn't spin around very well. So what needs to happen is take the crown wheel of both diffs, the N12 and the N13 one. We use the N12 diff and the N13 crown wheel. So you take the crown wheel off the N13 and put it on the N12 diff, like I've done now. And when you put it in, it'll spin nicely in there. So before we go any further, there's a couple of things you need to do. With bearings and races, they cannot be mixed and matched. So the races, which are these things here, need to match the bearing. They can't be mixed and matched. It means that you can either take all of the bearings off of the N12 gear sets and just put them on the N13 gear sets, or you can do it vice versa with the N13 box. Um, but what I kind of recommend is you're going to all this effort to pull all this stuff out, put new bearings and new races in the whole box. Right? Um, you probably you will need to take to a transmission shop as the bearings are pressed onto the gear sets. Um, and if you don't have a bearing press and things like that, you're going to be spending a lot of money to do it. So the cheaper option would just be to take it somewhere and get it done. It'll cost you between maybe a hundred to two hundred dollars all up. Um, but you'll have a nice new set of bearings and races, okay? And you know, if you've got one stuffed bearing or race in there, you're going to want to replace it anyway. So you may as well replace the whole lot. So now that you've got everything and it's out here ready to go, we can start installing it. On the note of uh, 
the bearings and raises, you've also got more in the bell housing. Okay, you've got the diff one here, the diff race here. There's another one right there for the output shaft. And this one in here for the input shaft. Okay, all that needs to be replaced as well. And then you've got a couple in the box itself. You've got the other diff one, uh, the other output shaft one, and the input shaft one doesn't actually have one on this end. Um, it's just the way the bearing is. It's got the race sort of built into the bearing, as you can see here. So you just, you basically, you take it into the shop and they'll press off the bearing, put in a new one. Same with all the other things like the diff and uh, output shaft there. Okay, so now we're going to reinstall it. We start off with the input shaft first because that's where you're going to have to heat things up. Alright, so I'm just going to plug in my heat gun now and we'll push that one in. The other reason you want to clean the whole box up is when you're using a heat gun, it's going to get the oil really hot and it will splatter and you really don't want to get that shit in your eyes. So wear gloves if you need to. And like I said before, be careful around the plastic bits because if you melt those, you're in a lot of trouble. There's also a rubber seal in the middle. Just be careful of how hot you're getting things. It doesn't need to be too hot, just enough that you can put the shaft back in. You know, it's tell it's hot enough because uh, the oil will start to bubble. Um, but you want to make sure it's completely flat in there. Okay, because you don't want to rely on this aluminium apex frame to push it down. I've actually done that and the aluminium frame will snap in half. It just, it, it, it can't take the amount of pressure required to push it down. So now you can bolt the input shaft back up. Just get your three 12mm bolts. Put those back on. Next I believe is the diff. Again, just go over the diff races and give them a good clean. In case any dust or dirt's fallen in there, just give the bearings themselves a good clean up. And it should just fall in there. Let's give it a spin, make sure it's sitting correctly. Next up will be the output shaft. And just give everything a nice clean up. And this obviously only goes in one way. It can be a little bit hard sometimes to get it in there properly. Just give it a spin and uh, make sure everything's spinning smoothly and everything. You notice on the rod there's a flat end here, flat and recessed. That part is going to go down, alright? So the bit with the ring up the top faces the sky, the other part goes down. And you'll see it with the reverse gear, it's got like a little slot. Um, you can see the notch slot sort of here so you just want to put that in like so okay but uh, you also want to put your reverse gear on there first just like that and just make sure it's in there properly you might take a tap with your rubber mallet Now that the reverse gear is back in, uh, you want to remember to put the little washer ring back on top of the reverse gear. So once the ring's back on there, you want to start putting all the springs back in. This one in here. And the bearing goes on top. Just be very careful it doesn't fall down, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. And you've got another spring in that hole there. And finally, bringing this hole here. Now, when you go to put the selectors back on, it can be a little bit difficult because the bottom selector will sort of sit like that. 
and it'll make it more of a pain to put the selector back in. There's kind of a bit of fiddling required to get it to sit nicely and everything and line up. So you can basically, you can tell here where it lines up, you want all those to line up like that, yeah? Line them all up like that. And then you can pretty much just put it straight down. So where I've got it now is just about um, in neutral. And that's probably the easiest position to have it to put this back on. You don't want to have to force it to line up with the thread holes because it means that it's not engaged into a gear properly or it's not sitting in a gear properly. Um, and when you go and try to move gears later on, you're going to have to pull the whole thing apart again to get it into that uh, correct positioning. So what you want to do now, grab your 10mm socket if you can find it. And then start screwing it in. they're all in, just start doing them up. You want to get these little um, space things. And just put them on the gear. So let it pull. And the way I usually do it um, is I put each one on the selector. So I put all three on the selectors. So then the next one we'll do is the middle fork. Just be careful when you're bringing it in so it lines up with that little tab there. There we go. And lastly the top one. There we go. So now they're all in. We can grab your rod, just put it down through all the forks. make sure it's sitting in there. Now, um, as you can see, I've cleaned up all of the uh, metal faces on the bell housing and the rest of the box. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put the bell housing on and you just want to go through all the gears. Um, make sure that you can select every gear because you don't want to put your gearbox in and then go, oh shit, I've got no reverse, I've got no first gear, you know. So just check it now rather than later. Um, and also before we put any uh, gasket goo on, because you don't want to have to pull it off, re-clean it or anything like that. Okay guys, um, so my phone has died, it keeps overheating, so I'm just going to use the GoPro for the final part. Um, it's pretty straightforward anyway. So now we can pretty much get the gearbox ready to put the bell housing back on. So this is the yellow plastic spout. It sits in there like this. And it can be a real pain in the ass to actually put the housing back on with that plastic spout in there. But we'll see how we go. For this I'm just using blue RTV. And we'll pretty much just go around the whole housing with the gasket goo. Alright, now the box is pretty much ready to go in. I'll just go around so you can have a look. There we go. Wicked. Now we can go and put all the bolts back in. Make sure every bolt that you put on also has this little washer in there. Right, everything's torqued up now. It's only, you know, 16 to 21 newton meters. It's not real tight, you know, so 
don't go crazy. While you're here, you probably want to check the reverse light switch. Um, it can leak around the thread here. I know this one does. I'm going to fix that up a bit later. Now the other thing is earlier in the video I took off the cap for the output shaft bear it now. I'm actually going to put the new one in here and I'm going to show you how to set the bearings preload. This is a very important part because if you don't do this you're going to end up having a blown bearing. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to set the preload for uh, this bearing. And in order to do that, we need to get all the shims you've got. Um, you should already have some from the N12 gear case, and you should have some from the N13 gear case. So put all those down to the side. And next thing you're going to need is a caliper. Um, you want to zero it off. And what we're going to do... You're going to measure the distance from the outer race to the transmission case. So you measure that distance and you might get about 0.2 mil. Um, I got about, there I've got 2.15. So what that means is you need to grab a shim that's pretty close to 0.215. Um, I've got one here already. Alright, and you put that in. And you basically, you want to measure the distance again and you need to add 0.2 mil. So if your initial measurement was 0.215, you add 0.2 mil to that, so that would be 0.235. And what you want to do is you want to grab like a couple of shims, or maybe one shim will do it, that'll give you that 2.5 or 2.35 mil uh, distance from the race. If you do need to use multiple shims, and say you use like a really thin one and then a thicker one, put the thinnest one on first and then the thick one on top, like that. Once you've got your shims and everything on there, um, take a good look at this seal in here. I've replaced this one already. Um, my old seal was pretty worn up. You definitely want a good seal in there because it's going to prevent oil from leaking out. And way there, give your plate a good clean up. Um, I've cleaned this one up here. So what's going to happen now is we're going to put a little bit of gasket goo, um, just use like blue RTV going to put a little bit of that around here and then we'll put the top plate back on and we'll torque it down all right so once you've put in all the bolts finger tight uh, we're going to torque it down uh, the torque specs for these are 6.3 to 8.3 newton meters or 4.6 to 6.1 foot pounds it's not much at all um, don't over tighten them because again you don't want to put too much pressure on that uh, bearing or the race Grab the torque wrench, we'll set our torque. Alright, and we're just going to torque them up. Okay. That's torqued up. Now I'm just going to clean up the silicon. So there you go. There's really not much more to it than that. If you followed this guide the whole way through, you should have now learned how to do the N13 internals conversion. It's going to result in a lot more torque down low, where the N12 really needs it. Um, you're going to have shorter gear range, um, but you'll feel the power build up a lot better. Uh, than the N12 gearbox. Just because of the different ground rule that we've put on there, it alters the uh, diff ratios quite a bit, but it's definitely noticeable, and in my books, it's definitely a mod worth doing. Big thanks to Evan Lyons for helping me out with this guide. Um, he's one of the guys who originally did the text guide on N12Turbo.com. I'd also like to thank Anthony Sabino for the N13 gearbox. Um, Without that, this guide wouldn't have happened. There you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Please like, subscribe and comment. Um, we are going to be doing more tutorials and guides in the future, so there's going to be plenty more happening on this channel. Fuck. I keep popping off the bloody windsock every time I walk past.